ready to get started. Toboggan. And pack the snowshoes. Beautiful day. It's about minus three right now. And uh, nobody is here at Canoe Lake. So I'd say we've got about three inches of powder on the ice. That's not going to be too bad, actually. If that holds up, it should be pretty good going. Pretty fresh. Probably today. Yeah, the hauling is super easy. Best I've ever had on any trip. Remarkable. What a great start. You've got another fresh track. Uh, I don't think I can call that one. Gonna have to go home and look it up. Made pretty good time across the lake. Come to this little obstacle. This is kind of like the Hillary step of this route. It's about 20 or 30 feet of vertical and usually a battle to get up it. And uh, now we've got the super duper crust. So it's not deep snow. Won't be a lot of friction on the toboggan, but uh, the grip on that crust might not be all that good. Thank you. 
Okay, that was the Hillary step. Man, 20 minutes at least. Uh, but I'm back on the Portage Trail at this point, and uh, it's not steep and comparatively level, so it's kind of more normal walking now. Now this is the last drop back down to the lake, so take the pack down first. All right, made it. Campsite. Huh. It's not super far, but that one portage is a serious amount of work. So this is the campsite here. Tent pad, nice flat open area. We've got Mature pines overhead. And uh, the lake is right there. It's a little bit screened, but of course that's what you want in the winter.
shovel out the wood that I had in the last camp. It's down here somewhere. Just uh, tramp out a spot for the tent. So I'm just going to rig up a little cutting station here so we can process some of this wood. Well, it's 7.30, finally got camp set up, uh, soup is ready to roll, just going to have that for the next little half hour or so, and then uh, probably time to start dinner. 
So, that there is the cream of leek soup, courtesy of Knorr. Well, we got dinner on the go now. Just getting some of those sausages fried up. And Cheetos, mac and cheese, is uh, on the menu tonight. And there you have it, Cheetos mac and cheese. Love that golden orange color. It's about 8.20, had a pretty good sleep. Bacon's on the go, water boiling for coffee. And uh, hoping to get out on the trail today for a little skiing. Uh, this is spring skiing at its best. The base is insane, like it's got to be at least 50 centimeters out there. And it's all granular snow, really solid. I am expecting a good ski today. Of course, <laughs> when I get out there and find out what's actually going on, it may be totally different. But uh, as of 8.20 a.m., I'm pretty hopeful. Eggs, bacon, and coffee. It doesn't get any better than that. I've got a loop of about 10 kilometers, which I normally ski here. I'm uh, going to try it today, see how far we get. Oh, it looks like some moose were sleeping here last night. These tracks and uh, droppings are totally fresh. Oh yeah, now here you can see the imprint of the animal's body very nicely. Wow, tough way to live. There's a, a flagged trail through the woods here which I found a few years ago and which I now use. Uh, I really don't know who flagged it. It's not really cleared very wide. Uh, in any way, just flagged. Uh, but this trail does show up on the Jeff's map. So it has some kind of status. I'm not sure what. Uh, well, for now, I'm uh, just using it to get to, uh, over to where the start of my loop begins. So this snow is surprisingly deep. Right here you can see uh, my pole with the basket, a backcountry basket, is going in well over a foot. It's probably 16 inches before it hits anything solid. So the pole on the left is just sitting on the surface. And the pole on the right, I just push down to the solid base down below. That's 16 inches of granular powder. And it's actually pretty slow going in here, but right here, there's a, a moose track right on the trail. And uh, if you ever spot a moose track in the woods, it's surprisingly helpful. Even though it doesn't look like it would be, it really, uh, especially on the skis, uh, gives me the flotation and makes the travel a lot easier. But uh, we'll see. I mean, the moose are all over the place in these woods and whether or not they're going where I want to go is just a matter of luck. Oh yeah, here we go. So, a bit of a straightaway. There's the trail there. You can just see it's been cleared maybe a little bit. And that moose has gone right up the trail, which means I'll be going twice as fast. Yeah, here's a little kind of wet spot that uh, never froze up all winter. And uh, there may be half a meter of snow all around it, but right here, the snow just melted and melted, Never, nothing ever froze. Uh, just goes to show you what kind of a winter it's been. It's just not nearly as cold as it used to be when I first started coming out here. Cool little spot here. 
you can clearly see the uh, a road cut and in fact I think that's what this trail is that's on Jeff's map it is following an old road which hasn't been used in decades this is the one place where you can kind of clearly see it so we're right in the middle of a little cluster of young cedars here but uh, this whole hillside is normally open hardwoods and a band of young conifers in the middle of a much larger stand of hardwoods is again a sign of a previous road. Uh, so a couple years ago I actually cut out a lot of this stuff because it was almost impassable. All right, so this is where I leave the flagged trail and head off to start my loop going up this slope here. Uh, so the flagged trail that I was following goes from left to right down this little gulch here. Down to the creek at the bottom, Namakuchi Creek, I think. Uh, but, uh, and I'm going to be following that creek uphill. Uh, I just can't follow it right down at the creek, it's much too difficult. So, the idea is to cut into the woods here and go through the open hardwoods uh, well above the level of the creek as much as possible. here. I just came out of the woods into this little open swampy meadow. That's where I'm headed up there. Nice look at the open hardwoods here. It's just a massive hillside right there. It disappears into the trees, but there's the actual sky way up there. And uh, I'm following along the base of this hill. So this is the creek here. I've kind of rejoined it halfway up to Namakuchi Lake. Uh, it goes through a, a much steeper valley right here. You can see that slope up there. And on the other side, also very steep. So I've come down to the level of the creek for at least uh, a while and then I gotta fight my way back up the hillside to get back up on top again. Another look at the uh, narrows here I'm getting through, so that's on the, the left, totally impassable over there. The creek on the bottom, and then up there to the right along the base of this also very steep slope is where the route goes. Okay, so I've been ascending the valley on the right. There's the creek down there. Still a pretty massive slope on the left. But on the right here is where I'm going to cut back up onto the flats. And that about does it. 
So there's the valley going downstream there. I'm up on top again. And uh, dead ahead, the white glimmers through the trees is Little Namakuchi Lake. So that completes the bushwhack section. It's about one or two kilometers uphill. I don't know, over a hundred feet of vertical at least, maybe closer to 200. Quite a slog. But the rest of the skiing will be much easier, just uh, lakes and portages. Stop for a break, a little uh, drink. Check the time. It's sufficiently warm out today that uh, I do not need hot water. <laughs> Ice water is what I want. So it's uh, just after 12.30. I left about 10.30. Uh, this is about one quarter of the loop. Uh, there's a shortcut back I can take here, back to Drummer Lake. Um, but by far the hardest stretch is what I've done. The other three quarters is much easier, so I think I can do the full loop and get back by comfortably by six o'clock and dusk. I've got a shitload of firewood, it's all prepped. And uh, so it shouldn't be any problem getting back a bit late. So this little drainage here is the outflow from regular Namakuchi Lake. Got a tricky little climb up the side here between the cedars and the creek. With the flowing water, it's the ice is no good, so I got to somehow squeeze up the side kind of like this Straight up the lake, over the portage, it's the V on the right, and into the next lake. Here's a look at the slope on the left of this portage. Gives a good indication of why the V was so pronounced from the lake. Very steep. And there's the portage going up the base of the V. Up there. That was actually kind of a tough portage, a lot of uphill. But uh, I think we're here. The next lake. Yeah, kind of a tricky drop here. Might be able to step through there. That little angle there. See how that goes. Managed that without wiping out. Couldn't film it, of course, but. It was a good little one. Okay. Right there at the end of this lake is the uh, Russian Uplands hiking trail. I'm gonna start my turn back. But if 
for the moment, I believe it's time for some lunch. So this part of the Western Uplands Trail is more of a road than a trail. Uh, in my opinion, a road is not a trail. Another tricky little descent here. Again, uh, there's been no freeze up in the drainage here. And uh, so the line is on the extreme left here and just try to squeak by, see if I can get through there. Yowie. <laughs> Whoa. Okay. So, the Uplands Trail continues on to the north, but this is where I jump off and take this beaver meadow here to get back to the lakes and the canoe route and uh, ultimately Drummer Lake. So the going's a little bit thick through the first part of this beaver meadow, but eventually it's going to open up and get a lot easier. That's more like it. Here we go. Dug myself another hole in the ground. Gonna take cover when I hear a plane sound. High water, low water for a working man. Gonna keep me on down to the people. Damn. There's a campsite here. It's a hell of a time getting into these campsites by canoe. I would never do it. The portages are onerous. But by skis, it's relatively easy. And this is a, probably a pretty good site. Nice flat spot there. And uh, Very nice lookout for the fire pit over the small part of the lake and the, with the afternoon sun. Just over there is the portage where we're headed next. Back at the lead to cross portage, all downhill, it's about 2k. Back to where I'm camped. And, uh, it's been a great day for skiing. 
it's warm, but there's been a pretty good northwest breeze uh, most of the day, really, keeping it cool. So overall, just a perfect, perfect combination. So I just came in, sit down for a minute and tighten up my boots. Uh, I've wiped out on this portage numerous times at the end of the day, tired legs, spring conditions with a bit of uh, granular snow. Uh, it's always touch and go. Today there is a bit more powder. Base isn't quite as consolidated so should be fine I think. Here we are, back at my truck in this morning. That completes the loop. And, uh, just uh, 100 meters back to camp. Uh, and it'll be time to get dinner started. Okay, last drop down to the lake. There's a major wood falling operation here. I got three or four trunks out of this space yesterday. Busy place there. Okay, here we are. There's the last of the setting sun. And quarter to six. Well, that really was a great day for the skis. Haven't had such, such a good day in quite a while, actually. So, we'll buck up a little more wood, get the dinner on the go. All right, uh, soup is done. Got water on the boil for making dinner. That means the next course is beer. 
Not going to lie. I was kind of thinking about that beer uh, since about 4 o'clock this afternoon. Seven hours on the trail with half hour off for breaks. Uh, at my age, that's not so easy anymore. And um, this beer is well deserved. Damn, that's good. Another great day this morning. It's about 10.30. And uh, I got to head out later today. But before I do that, I'm going for another ski. This time, the track is set. So yesterday was a bit of a slog. Uh, today is going to be skiing. Beautiful day for it. It's going to be warm later on. Right now though it's a bit chilly and a pretty good northwesterly. Couldn't ask for more. There's a cool little spot. There's a beaver dam right there on the creek and then it, the seepage is just coming down here. And uh, that's where I got across the first part of it. Standing in the middle of it right now. In the summertime, this would just plow right through it, not even think about it. But uh, on skis, um, yeah, if you get the skis wet and then they freeze, you got to scrape off the ice. So uh, I was able to make use of this little kind of mini snow bridge to go across this uh, seepage. I wasn't here when that thing came down, but I'm pretty sure it made a noise. Just back at the lean-to here, I'm skiing in reverse today. Uh, but uh, there's a nice little drop here off to the left. It's about six or eight feet. And, uh, oh, it's not much by downhill standards, but these little drops are super fun on backcountry skis in Algonquin and you know, with snowshoes, uh, it's just trudging up, trudging down. So I'm going to take the drop. Can't really film it here, but we'll see if I, I do that without wiping out. Got it. That's what I'm talking about. That's what this is all about. If I wasn't filming, I could ski this a lot faster. Oh, yeah. Yikes. Wouldn't have wiped out if I wasn't filming. Oh, yeah. Oh. All right, got a nice little drop here. Might not look like much on the camera, but uh, it's one of the steeper ones. So, uh, I'm gonna run it and uh, without filming, see how it goes. Okay, got it, very nice. And uh, got a little telly turn in there at the bottom. That's always fun. And then it comes out onto a road here. Portage crosses this logging road. Just got back, uh, it's about 3.15 and uh, 
Gonna start to take everything down, pack it all up, and uh, this trip will be over. Got everything packed up. It's probably uh, about 5.30 or so. And uh, all set for the hike out to the car. Well, it's been a great trip. I've uh, got a nice pile of wood all ready to go. If I can squeeze one more trip in before the thaw or the uh, the spring and the uh, final meltdown, I can probably finish burning that off. Okay, I need a haul. Just got off the portage. Nice shot of Canoe Lake here at sunset. <laughs> 